Hello, and welcome back to the Starting Five video series. I'm your host, Adam Spencer, and in today's video, we're going to talk some bold SEC predictions. Yes, it's still early, but they wouldn't be bold if we had too much information about the team. So first, let's start with last year's last place team, the Vanderbilt Commodores. My bold prediction for them this year, they don't finish last. Hey, it's been a while. Jerry Stackhouse has this team going in the right direction, and they have a future NBA player in Scottie Pippen Jr. You may remember his dad. Yeah, he's not gonna be that good in the NBA, but he's going to play in the league someday. He's a dynamic scorer, he can get the ball to the rim, he's a playmaker for other people on the team. I think he's going to surprise some people in the Vanderbilt Commodores, they're not going to finish last in the SEC standings this year. Next, let's move on to the Mississippi State Bulldogs, a team that I think might finish last this year actually. I think that they have an all-SEC talent in DJ Stewart, the guard who has led them in scoring through their first three games, every single game. he's just lighting it up, and Mississippi State's offense is not good. They lost Reggie Perry, the co-SEC player of the year, Robert Woodard, Tyson Carter. They lost these guys who could score the ball. Nick Weatherspoon was another key player on that team, and they're all gone. DJ Stewart is the one guy who comes back from last year's team that was a consistently great scorer for them, and now he's taking it to another level, and I think he's going to be on one of the all-SEC teams. I don't know if he's going to be on the second team or the first team, but he's going to be honored this postseason because he's already off to a really hot start this this year and I love the way that he's putting the offense on his shoulders. Next up are the Georgia Bulldogs sticking with the Bulldogs theme. Severe Wheeler, learn the name now. I know that this was a team that was dominated by Anthony Edwards and Rayshon Hammonds last year, but Severe Wheeler is perhaps the best pure point guard in the SEC this year. The guy has already put up two double doubles this year. He had 12 points, 12 assists in the season opener, 17 points, 10 assists in the second game. No, they weren't playing SEC quality competition, but if he can keep distributing the ball and finding ways to score, he's going to be a star for this Georgia team. Not on the same level as Anthony Edwards, but I do think that he has the potential to work his way into the round one NBA draft conversation. Maybe not for the 2021 draft if he decides to come back to Georgia, but he will be in that conversation based on the way he's playing right now and into SEC season. I think he's just going to continue to improve under Tom Crean, who is no stranger to sending guards to the NBA. Next up are the Ole Miss Rebels, who need someone desperately to replace Brian Tyree and everything that he did for that team. Well, they have their top-rated recruit in history in Matthew Morrell, and I think that he's going to be a one-and-done player. So enjoy him in Oxford while he lasts, because that dude is off to the NBA next year. He's a great talent. He's a scorer with the ball in his hands, and he's going to make plays. He's got guys like Devontae Schuler to pass to. He's got Kadeem Sai in the post, and the Arizona State transfer, Romello White, who I really like as a player, and I think he's going to be a huge impact player in the SEC this year. Morrell is going to be charged with getting the ball to them and letting them score, and I think he's going to take his talents to the NBA after one year in Oxford. Next up, we have the Auburn Tigers, who are already serving a one-year postseason ban that they self-imposed this year, and I think they picked a good year to do it because this is a rebuilding year for Bruce Pearl's squad. My bold prediction for them this year, they lead the SEC in three-pointers taken, but they finish in the bottom five in the league in percentage made. Now, that's not unprecedented because they shot the second most threes in the SEC just a season ago and finished 14th, which is last place for those keeping the score at home in percentage. But this year, I think they're going to do something similar like that. They're going to just launch threes because they have guards and they got guys who can shoot, but they're not quite there yet. These are younger guys. These aren't the Tigers that we remember from last year when Samir Doughty was leading the way and lighting up the score sheet on a nightly basis. This is a team that has young talent and these players are good, but they're going to need some time to develop. Bruce Pearl has that time. He bought himself a year with the self-imposed penalty. We'll see if the NCAA decides to hammer Auburn with any future sanctions, but for now, this is going to be strictly a developmental year for the Tigers, and that means that Bruce Pearl doesn't need to change his style at all. Just launch those threes and let them fall where they may. It's only going to build experience for next year when I think that the Tigers are going to quickly get back to the top of the SEC. Now, how about we talk about the South Carolina Gamecocks under Frank Martin? He consistently produces some of the toughest teams in the SEC. The good news for the Gamecocks is that they've already got their bad loss out of the way. They opened the season with a loss to Liberty. Moving forward, I still think they could have another trip up in non-conference play, maybe against a rival team like Clemson, but I do think that this is a team that's going to pull off a major upset in SEC play. My bold prediction for this team, 
they're going to beat either Kentucky or Tennessee at some point this season. Now they catch Kentucky at a great time because they make the trip to Lexington, which is never easy, but they make that trip to start SEC play. Now, that's a time when the Wildcats are not going to have their feet fully under them because the Wildcats are a young team. That game has upset written all over it, and I think that that's one that the Gamecocks can win. Plus, they get two cracks at the Volunteers this year. They host the Vols on January 12th and then travel to Knoxville on February 16th. Now, I think that one of those two games could go the Gamecocks way just based on recent history. And like I said, Frank Martin's teams always seem to end up in the top half of the SEC standings. It's incredible. And that's a testament to him as a coach, the talent that he has on the roster. And I think that continues this year with a big upset. Now let's move on to the Texas A&M Aggies. Texas A&M brings in a transfer from Quinnipiac named Kevin Marfo. Now Marfo led the country in rebounds last year with 13.3 per game. My bold prediction, he does it again. SEC, it doesn't matter. He comes into bigger, better competition, and he does it again, maybe even with 14 rebounds per game. I like that number. I like Kevin Marfo as a player. He's a defensive mastermind, and I think that he's going to be a huge post presence for the Aggies in 2020-2021. Next up is Arkansas. And now the Razorbacks have me on the must bus this year already because Eric Musselman is doing a fantastic job with all these transfers. Losing Mason Jones, losing Isaiah Joe, doesn't matter. He's got this team scoring. They scored 142 in their season opener. I mean, come on. The players that he's doing this with are largely unproven at this level. And one of those guys is Cal transfer, seven foot three, Connor Vanover. When you see him on the floor, Connor Vanover looks like Sean Bradley. You might remember Sean Bradley from the movie Space Jam a little better, where he was the blue monster, I believe. Well, I think Connor Vanover is another player. He's shown he can block shots. He had six the other night and he can shoot the three. That's an incredible range for a seven foot three guy. And so I think he's going to make one of the all sec teams too i think he's stepping up as a leader of this arkansas team and he's going to get a lot of minutes a lot of shots and he's impossible to defend what do you do with a guy who's seven three and can step out and knock down an open three that's crazy i really like watching him play i'm a big fan of what muss is doing with this team and vanover is the epitome of what muscleman is trying to accomplish with this team Next, let's take a trip to Tuscaloosa and Nate Oates' Alabama program. We know that they like to run and gun. We know that they like to shoot the three. So my bold prediction, sophomore Jaden Shackelford leads the SEC in three-point percentage. He shot 35.7% last year. Through a couple of games this year, he's already hitting 40.9% of his threes. Now he's taking a couple fewer per game than he was last year, but I think those numbers will consistently grow as he gets more comfortable with this season. And with a new point guard in Javon Quinterly from Villanova. I think once that comfort level gets there, Shackelford is going to light up the nets and he's going to finish as the SEC's three-point percentage leader. That's no slight to John Petty, his teammate, who I think might finish number two. Now there's a bold prediction. One and two in three-point percentage in the SEC. That's, that's what I'm going with. Now we hit Mizzou, my alma mater. They just picked up a big win in Omaha against a ranked Oregon team, and they looked really good doing it. This year's pandemic season, it's going to favor teams that have more experience, more talent returning from last year, and the Tigers have that in spades. Conzo Martin has the most experience, the most depth that he's ever had at Mizzou, and I think that Xavier Pinson is a big star, Drew Smith, Mark Smith, Mitchell Smith, they have all the Smiths. And Jeremiah Tillman, as long as he doesn't foul out in 10 minutes per game, like it seems like he does sometimes, He's shown that he can be a dominant post presence. He's just, he's got an NFL tight end body basically. And if he can stay in games and continue to get rebounds, this is gonna be a tough team to beat. So my bold prediction for Mizzou is that they finish in the top five of the SEC standings this year. I just think that this crazy season with cancellations, lack of practice time, social distancing, all that, it's favoring teams that have experience and the Tigers have that more than anyone else in the SEC. And that's gotta translate into the win column or else Conzo Martin's gonna find himself on the hot seat. Now let's take a trip down to Baton Rouge where a sensational freshman is already making his presence felt. Cam Thomas. That guy can score and I think even as a true freshman this year he's going to lead the league in points per game. That's a bold prediction I know for a freshman but he's proven already through three games that he can do it. 
he scored 25 points against a tough St. Louis team. And yeah, LSU lost that game, but Cam Thomas is just lighting up the scoreboard. He's averaging 24.3 points through three games. He's a guy who's going to continue to be put in a position to hit shots because Javante Smart is not a great outside shooter. Cam Thomas can fill that role they desperately need since Skylar Mays left. He's hitting 44.4% of his threes. And while I do think that that number will come down a little bit, he's also money from the free throw line. He can score from anywhere on the court. And I think that that's going to help him as he goes on his quest to lead the SEC in scoring at over 20 points per game. Next, we're going to head to Florida, where I was going to put Mike White on the hot seat. But after seeing the way that the Gators dominated Boston College, I think that he's going to get his team going in the right direction this year. So my prediction is that Keontae Johnson, the SEC preseason player of the year, is going to be the postseason player of the year too. Now that has happened a couple times in recent years. Grant Williams out of Tennessee did it in 2019. Deontay Mayton from Georgia did it in 2018 when he shared the postseason honors with Grant Williams. So it's been done before that. Those were the only two guys who did it for the entire decade. If Keontae Johnson can go from preseason to postseason player of the year in the SEC, he'll be just the third person in this decade to do it. And he'll also be Florida's first SEC player of the year since Scotty Wilbekin back in the 2013-14 season. If you watch him play, he's only 6'5", but he plays like a center and he has the handle of a guard. He can knock down threes. He's deadly when you try to close out on him. He's a decent passer. He's a great rebounder. He's got it all. He's the most complete player in the SEC, and if he can continue to play like a superstar, that bodes well for Florida. Next, we're heading to Tennessee, where I think that Eves Pons is the best defender in the country. My prediction, he repeats as SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He's got the talent. He can block shots. He can guard one through five on the court. Doesn't matter who you put out there. He can D him up. Now, it hasn't been done since Robert Williams out of A&M, but the second year, he split the award with Chris Silva out of South Carolina. I think that Pons wins it solo again this year, and that would be the first time since Jarvis Bernardo won it out of Mississippi State three years in a row to close out the 2000s. Finally, that leaves us with the Kentucky Wildcats. There are several different ways that I could go with this one. I want to make a prediction about Isaiah Jackson leading the nation in blocks after what I saw against Kansas. That guy can jump out of the gym, and he times it so well. He's so good at reading what the offensive player is going to do, positioning his body right and timing his jump. He's incredible to watch on that end of the floor, and he and Olivier Saar are one of the best defensive post tandems in all of college basketball outside of West Virginia, I think. But I'm going to keep it simple for my bold prediction. I still have faith that this freshman class turns it around. No, they can't shoot threes right now. Yes, they turn the ball over too much. I still think that they get it together, Cal gets his guys together, and they win the SEC. Kentucky, SEC champions, bold prediction, book it.